But if there's one thing I do regret, and I use that term very, very loosely, I kind of regret... What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. As you guys can tell by the title, today's video is gonna be a q and A. I I asked you guys over on my Instagram to send me a bunch of your questions, and you guys loved my last sit down video, so I definitely wanna do more of those this year. And I love nothing more than just sitting down and talking to you guys, so I can't wait to answer some of your questions. In past videos, you guys have heard me mention that one of my big goals for this year is to save and invest my money. And I actually got a few questions asking me how exactly do I plan on saving more money this year and invest so I'm so excited to announce that I'm actually partnered up with Acorns for today's video. So huge shout out to them. I love, love, love Acorns. I've been using them for years and it's such an easy way to save and invest your money. My number one biggest tip for saving and investing is to have systems in place where you don't even have to think about it. So when I have to actually physically move money to my savings or remember to put a certain money into my investment portfolio, it just doesn't work out. Like we're really busy people. We have jobs, we have kids. So having to think about extra steps, again, I like things that are easy so that's why i love acorns you can invest as little as spare change you can set up reoccurring investments weekly you can invest while you spend you can earn bonus investments while you're shopping your favorite brands and more our generation is constantly told save your money invest your money but we're never told how to do these things instead in school we're taught the pythagorean theorem and not things that are actually useful for our lives i discovered acorns a few years ago shortly after i had cave on and it was the perfect timing after i had cave on i really started to think about investing investing and saving. I also think it was like the age I was at too, but naturally when you become a parent, you really start to think about the future. So I'm like, okay, I need to set up things in place. We need to start investing. We need to start saving. I really want to secure a future for my kids and my family. That's a huge thing I love about Acorns is that I can have my own personal savings and investment account. And then I can also have my kids under there as well with their own personal accounts. What really helped me with Acorns is that I set up automatic savings. So again, I set a certain amount to be saved into each account every single week and you guys can also do like week you can do a month and again you can invest as little as spare change you can invest five dollars a week into your savings if you want to and then acorns will do the work for you and they will help you save and invest by diversifying your portfolio for you again you do not need a lot of money to get started you can invest as little as your spare change using their roundups feature and that's probably one of my favorite features that acorns offers for example let's say you bought something that cost i don't know five dollars and sixty cents Acorns will take the amount of cents and run it up to the nearest dollar. So that 40 cents automatically goes straight into your investment portfolio. I have saved so much money from this feature. And again, I don't even notice that money leaving my bank account. Cause again, it's like 40 cents. You don't even notice it. There's no expertise required. Investments are automatically put into diversified portfolios based on your risk tolerance. And if you do want to learn, Acorns has premium financial education for the whole family, including courses, quizzes, and more. And your Acorn subscription can include go henry which is a debit card and learning app made just for kids so with that being said the sooner you start investing the more chance your money has time to grow from little acorns comes a big mighty oak tree hence the name of the app you guys can click that link in my description box or you guys can go to acorns.com slash and download acorns and start investing and saving for your future today so make sure you guys click that link in my description box So on to the next question. You know, I actually got a ton of questions about Mel and I, our relationship, how we are after having three kids, our sex life, lots of spicy stuff. So I figured, I think it would be best for us to answer those questions together. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do a sit down video together and answer those questions. And I'm gonna leave some of those out for today, but stay tuned. We're gonna do a little couples Q and A soon. Someone asked, have or would you ever try and out their hair color, red, purple, etc." So you guys know I'm not crazy with my hair. I never really experiment. I did dye my hair black for the first time when I turned 18. I was like, I'm gonna do something different. I dyed my hair like jet black. I'll put a picture of that on the screen. I honestly didn't really like it. It wasn't super flattering for me. And I hated when the roots would grow out. I'm just not good with beauty maintenance, you guys. So like after two weeks, my hair grows so fast. So after two weeks, you would see like my light roots and then like the jet black hair. 
so it wasn't really my favorite i did do a dark brown as well a few times the dark brown was okay it was definitely better than the black like black i just i can't do jet black y'all um the dark brown looked good i did get highlights after i gave birth to cave on because i wanted more blonde in my hair but overall guys i really do love my hair color this is my natural hair color so i have like a true like ash brown and honestly, I think it just fits me best. It fits my eye color the best. It fits my skin tone the best. Would I ever do anything crazy? I definitely wouldn't. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so boring. I, I wouldn't dye my hair red. I wouldn't dye it purple. I would do a wig, but I wouldn't dye it. I'm, I'm a boring whore, y'all. I might get highlights again, like for the summer, maybe. But overall, I really do like my hair color. Someone asked, do you want Yas to settle down? If you guys are new here, Yasmin is my older sister. Someone's asking, do you want her to settle down? Of course I do. We always talk about it. I, I can't wait for the day where Yasmin is married with kids as well. And we can do like family things together. Not to say that we couldn't do that now, but it's just different. Like I can't wait until we just have like all the kids together and we like go on a family vacation together or we take all the kids, you know, like the cousins, we take them to like amusement parks and all of that. You know, that's just so cute to me. And I know Yasmin would love it too. And then like going on maybe like couples trips, like me and Mel and Yasmin and her man, like that would be really fun. Um, obviously I don't want to rush her. I want my sister to wait for like the perfect man for her. But when the time comes, I already know, like it's just going to be amazing. Someone asked something you regret not doing in general, I mean. I actually had to really sit and think about this question because I'm somebody who likes to live my life with not a lot of regret. I think everything happens for a reason. But if there's one thing I do regret, and I use that term very, very loosely, I kind of regret not going to college, believe it or not. But again, I hear some people like college was the biggest waste of money for me. It was the biggest waste of time for me. So again, maybe college wasn't meant for me. And I think for my career field, I don't necessarily need college, but I kind of do wish I got that like college experience, um, living in a dorm, I don't know. You know, I was actually talking to Yasmin about that. And I think in this day and age, in 2023, 2024, I feel like going to college became cool again. I don't want to say it became cool, but look at girls like Alex Earl and Monet. They built their careers while being in college. So when it was my time to go to college back, I graduated high school in 2017. I looked at the girls that I was aspiring to be like, and they all lived in LA. You know, that's, that's kind of what you did. I know you can do social media anywhere, but I truly do. Like living in LA is just different with the amount of events that you have. All the headquarters, the offices are here. Um, for me, who's looking to start a business, literally there's so many manufacturers like down the street from me. Like it, it really is a great place to be. But I do think maybe if I was graduating high school last year or this year, and I saw girls who were very successful in their careers while going to college, maybe I would have thought to go to college as well. But back in my time, 2017, 2018, everybody was dropping out of college to pursue social media full time. Again, I don't wanna say that as if I'm a follower and I'm gonna do what everybody else is doing, but it would have been nice to see people who were in college and actually flourishing in their career because I feel like the people who were in college or started college the same time that I was supposed to be going to college, they kind of fell off. I don't wanna say they fell off in popularity, but they weren't posting as often. They had other priorities and I was very just tunnel vision. I knew what I wanted and I knew what I wanted to go after. And for me, I felt like the next steps were to just go straight into being full-time content creator and living in LA. Again, I don't regret it, but I'm just somebody I like to achieve. I feel like the world is my oyster. And I feel like having a college degree would have been another nice thing to have under my belt. <laughs> but again, college isn't going anywhere. I can still go. I can do online school, but I just at least wish I had like my prerequisites done okay are you asking this as in are there things i wish i could do better or is this something that i've done in the past and i'm like oh i wish i would have done better at that so i'm not sure exactly what you mean but i wish i could sing better i can't sing at all you guys know the people that are humble and they're like oh yeah i'm not the greatest singer but they can still like carry a tune like i would make glass break like i always say god couldn't give me everything okay so he took away my voice i cannot sing at all 
I wish I could dance better. But I guess if you're asking me, is there anything I wish I could have done better, like in the past tense? I wish I would have hopped on the TikTok bandwagon a little sooner. I was very late to the TikTok game. I remember Mel was super into TikTok and I'm like, you're on that little kids app. You know, I thought I was too cool for TikTok. And now I wish, I know I've mentioned in other videos that's something I wanna work at this year is just improving my TikTok and building a better connection with you guys on there. Cause I feel like I, I neglect TikTok so bad, you guys. It's like the least of my priorities. Again, I'm not saying it's too late. It's never too late, but I do wish I would have started it a little sooner and really just established myself on there. I'm the new girl, you know, and I'm walking in like, hey, how's everybody doing on there? Like. I'm comfortable here on YouTube, on Instagram, but then TikTok, I'm like, am I cool enough to be here? Like, do you think Ohio is a better place to raise children than LA? It depends on which sense you're talking about. If you're talking about money wise, then yeah, I think Ohio is better than LA because everything is just more affordable in Ohio. Gas is cheaper. Housing is cheaper. The amount of money you spend here in LA, you can get like a mansion in Ohio, but the price is going up in Ohio. Um, yeah, so money wise, it's great. Like we go out to dinner in Ohio and I'm like, oh my God, a cocktail is only like $9, like $11 here in LA. It's like $24 for a cocktail. I like a nice restaurant, but guys, Columbus is on the come up. I'm not going to say Ohio as a whole, but Columbus, the capital city, that's like where I'm from. Every, every time I go back to visit, it's getting more and more advanced. A lot of brands are actually based in Columbus, Ohio. I think Victoria's Secret is... Um, Guess is based in Ohio, uh, Procter & Gamble. So all of these like beauty products you see, they're based in Cincinnati. So Ohio's just on the come up. Lots of jobs are coming out of Ohio, especially in the tech field. So a lot of people are moving there. But guys, I would say from the time that I moved from Ohio until now, it has just like, it's really coming up. Like every time I go, I'm like, okay, new rooftop bar, okay, wellness clinic okay pilates studio we didn't have all those things when i used to live there which is why i was so drawn to la because they had all the cool and trendy stuff but ohio now is like columbus i don't know about all these little towns around ohio but columbus like they have like i said like cool little rooftop restaurants like they're getting more bougie which i like i was also going to say the thing i love about california over ohio is the diversity because i felt personally growing up in ohio i didn't see a lot of diversity the craziest thing is here i'll be at the mall and i hear literally everybody speaking farsi it's as if i'm in iran like everybody's speaking farsi back home in ohio if i said where i'm from Everybody's like, where? I'm like, oh, I'm Persian. They're like, who, what, where? Like, it's so weird to me that there's so many Iranians in one community. Because again, when I was in high school, I was the only Iranian girl. I was the only Persian girl in my whole school. Like there was no other Iranian. And even when I said I was Persian or Iranian, they're like, where's that, who? So I really do love the diversity here. For example, we go to our community park. I swear I hear like 20 different languages being spoken. It's like the United Nations. So I love that my kids will grow up seeing, you know, different cultures and experiencing people from different backgrounds. And again, I'm talking in the sense of five, 10 years ago in Columbus, I'm sure more diversity, it's getting more diverse as more people move there. But especially for, especially for Yasmin growing up, it got a little better with me, but for Yasmin, she's like, I just felt so alone. Someone asked, how do you and Mel work on y'all with the kids being an obvious first priority? I'm gonna be completely honest. Again, I said I was gonna do a separate video with Mel and I'm sure we're gonna touch on that together in that video, but I'm gonna be honest, we do put us on the back burner a lot, but I do think that's very normal for couples who are in this season of life. When you have little kids, especially three little babies, it's really hard to put the relationship first. Again, I think because Mel and I are on the same page, we know it's a season, we know it's not forever. We just, just go with the flow. Neither of us holds resentment, neither of us feels like we're neglecting one another. We just know like, this is just how it is right now. It's a lot, you guys, having to worry about work, having to worry about taking care of a home. And then again, three little babies we have other priorities right now and that's okay not to say that we don't prioritize each other like for example mel was out with the kids today while i was getting ready to film this and he texted me and he's like i miss you let's try to get the kids down a little earlier tonight and sit and watch a movie you know just little things like that so just for us it's just again just making the time to make that little itty bitty effort just to be like i miss you i love you have a good day it doesn't need to be i don't need grand gestures i don't need him to 
I don't need to walk into the room and see rose petals on the bed. Like, again, this is the season we're in. We're just trying to get through. We're kind of, we're essentially in survival mode right now. So again, I just think in all relationships, whether you have kids or not, the number one thing that's most important is communication. And then also making sure you guys are on the same page. Someone asked, if you weren't doing YouTube as your main, what would you do? Good question. It's so hard for me to think about it because again, I started social media so young. The only other job I have ever worked other than social media was being a lifeguard for one summer. Um, and then also working in my parents' restaurant as well. So what would I do instead? I definitely would have gone to college. Probably wasted a few years of my life not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. But I always say I probably would have gone into nursing, aesthetic nursing. And I would have loved to do like fillers, Botox, laser, stuff like that. So yeah, I do think I would have gone into nursing. Again, I enjoy school, so I think I would have liked the science aspect behind it and all of that. If not that, I feel like I would have worked in PR. Like I would have worked for a makeup brand, beauty brand, and just kind of been the on that side of things, not really the talent side, but you know, the behind the scenes side. I don't know, it's so hard to think. It's like thinking about your life in an alternate reality, you know? Do you ever feel like you share too much with the world? Yes, I'm an overshare. Aside from YouTube, I think in person too. Like I'll tell my life story to my Uber driver and my cash, my cashier at the grocery store. I do think my openness and vulnerability is one of my strong suits. And I think it's one of the reasons for my success on social media, but I also think the older I'm getting too, the more I'm just kind of like, I don't need to be doing this. I do think I share a lot. And again, for those of you who love me and support me, it's great. But then it also kind of bites me in the butt sometimes because let me sit my emotional support Stanley before I get into this topic. <laughs> it's just with sharing a lot about your life, people will really feel like they know you. Not only you, but then they'll really feel like they know your family. And sometimes that can be a really beautiful thing. But at the same time, it can also come with just, it's hard to put into words because again, I love that close connection I have with my audience. But at the same time, there's so many things where I'm just like, I just kind of wish I just didn't share it and I could just be in peace. Like for example, my mommy makeover. I just posted yesterday, like a four month, up, not an update because I just posted an older TikTok. I just said like officially four months after my mommy makeover, the comments, like I've been getting some really terrible comments. And to me, I'm just like, I could have just not shared this, did what I wanted to do and gone on with my day. It's not easy to be vulnerable and it's especially not easy to be vulnerable to over a million people. So again, I, do, I don't regret sharing as much as I do, but I do think the older I'm getting, the more I appreciate having more privacy because again, people don't need to know everything. There's one thing from the beginning, even though I'm somebody who's like an open book, there's one thing from the very beginning I knew I did not want to do and that's overshare my kids. So you guys know I do post my kids. I'm not that type of parent who like blocks their face in every picture. I do show my kids, but I refuse to become a page that makes my children the center of my content. I'm not gonna name names, but you guys know. You guys know the pages where the family channel kind of turns into the kids being the stars of the show and it'll be like a picture of like the kid crying and it'll be like we can't believe this happened to poor jason like i that i don't like that again i do share my kids and i do like to share you know the positive aspects about it but my page is motherhood through my lens motherhood through my eyes if i do share my kids it's not my kids are running the show and i need my kids to make my content. Like I could decide for my kids to not be a part of my content tomorrow and I can still make a living off of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? How do you and your husband resolve conflict, especially in front of the kids? So Mal and I have gotten into pretty heated arguments in front of Kayvon and it only took one or two times for us to see how Kayvon reacted off of it that we were like, we cannot get that heated. And we both needed to grow up a little bit. Like the way we would fight, lots of yelling, lots of screaming, lots of, it was just, it was just not it. Like we both need to grow up. And Kayvon is extremely sensitive. He picks up on energy shifts. Like literally you could say hi to him a certain way. He's gonna be like, what's wrong mommy? He's very in tune with his emotions. He's very sensitive. So when Mel and I would get heated, it would totally take over Kayvon and he would get just as heated. So after we saw that, we are like, we need to fix 
that. But at the same time, I think it's very important for kids to see parents fight. I think it's very important for them to see parents disagree and for them to, I mean, obviously not fight fight, but I do think it's important for kids to grow up and see parents and partners come to disagreements and then to also see the conflict resolutions. I know a lot of people grew up with parents, well, my parents fought in front of me, I don't know about you guys, but I know some people grew up with parents that would never ever argue in front of the kids. To an extent, I do think that's ideal, but I do think it's important for kids to see people get into disagreements and to see healthy ways to fix those conflicts. So if kids grow up and never see an argument, when they get into their own romantic relationships, they're gonna have this idea that relationships are rainbows and butterflies so that when they come to disagreements with their partner, they're not gonna know how to navigate it. Or let's say you had parents where only like your dad called the shots or only your mom called the shots and the other parent just kind of like went along with it. Especially for my daughter, I don't want her to grow up and think that she can't question a man or she can't throw in her two cents or that her voice isn't important or that she doesn't need to be heard. I That's like the number one thing I don't want them to go through. I think it's very important for them to learn how to navigate through conflicts and situations. Whether we like it or not, kids learn so much from their parents and unfortunately, we're seeing that a lot with our generation. We're learning about childhood trauma and stuff like that. I just want my kids to grow up in a house where there's open communication and we learn healthy coping mechanisms instead of just yelling at each other or giving each other the cold shoulder or throwing a vase at someone's head. Like, I don't want them to grow up seeing that. I want them to learn how to be emotionally healthy. What do you feel like you took for granted when you didn't have any kids, time or goal-wise? <laughs> Everything, honestly. I always tell my friends who don't have kids, no matter how busy you think you are, which I'm not saying you're not busy, you're busy. But no matter how busy you are now, when you have kids, you're gonna be like, I had so much free time. And then the funny thing is when you have more kids, like now that I have three, I look back to just having one and I'm like, oh, having one was a breeze. Like I do miss just like literally doing whatever I want. But at the same time, I do prefer me as a mom. I do think it just made me a way more well-rounded person. Like I mentioned, I think I mentioned in my 25 things I learned at 25, becoming a mom just finally got rid of my procrastination bug. I'm just up earlier, I'm more productive. It made me a more productive person. And again, like I said, I had kids young, so maybe as I've gone older, I would have just naturally done those things, but I wouldn't trade my kids for the world. Like all of those luxuries, like sleeping in more or doing whatever you want and stuff, for me, I would never ever, from the bottom of my heart, I would never ever ever trade it for my kids. I love my kids so much and they've done nothing but enhance my life and make my life more beautiful. So I'm not saying it's not hard, don't get me wrong, it's hard, but it's worth it for my kids. Also, I think it's important to note that you're never gonna love anybody else's kids more than your own kids. So I know I know some people who are like, I don't really like kids. And I personally, I don't think you're a monster for not liking kids. That is your prerogative and you have every right. But I'm like, you're never gonna feel that type of love towards somebody else's children more than your own. You know, like your own kids, it's gonna hit completely different. What's an alternative version of your life you'd like to live for a week? Again, I've been on social media for so many years. I would have loved to see my life if social media, like if I wasn't on social media. I can't even fathom that, you guys. Again, I've been doing this since I was literally in eighth grade. Even you guys, like you guys are like my friends. Like my followers are like my friends. Like you guys DM me and you know, just I love to talk to you guys, so I can't imagine like logging onto social media and I don't have like any DMs from any strangers. Like, is that weird? I'm like, I have like no DMs from anybody or like comments from you guys or I don't know. It seems kind of lonely when I think about it. Like, not that I'm lonely, but it would just be a huge life shift and to not feel the need to like take stories when I'm out or to vlog. Like I would love to experience my life just like off grid. I'm not just talking about not having social media, like living on a farm somewhere or like in the rainforest. And I'm just like living off the land and the nature. And I, I really want to experience like what that's like. I'm not saying it would be easy for me, but I would love to see what life is like living that type of lifestyle. Someone asked, which amongst your kids is chill, mooch? 
100% mooch across the board. Ask anybody, literally. Ask anybody. Be like, who is the most calm of the kids? Mooch. She is a little lady, okay? She is a Virgo Cancer Cancer Queen. The only time you'll hear her getting turned up is when her brothers are annoying her. Because Kai... Kai can just like, Kai will just like walk up to her and snatch her toy. He'll, he's just so much bigger than her. So he'll like accidentally like push her over. And Mooch is just like over it. Like sometimes when Kai starts walking towards her, you just hear and she's like, mm. and she'll like walk across the room. She's like, get my brother away from me. So yeah, Mooch, Mooch is the chillest, 100%. And I think that's how it's gonna be for the rest of their lives. Could you give up social media for six months? Well, again, social media is my job. So that's like me asking you to not work your job for six months. I could because I do have a decent amount of savings and investments on acorns. Um, could I? Yes. Would I want to? No, because I feel like I would miss out on a lot of opportunities. You know, I do kind of also fear that if I did take six months off of social media, that it would be hard to come back. Not saying I don't love my job and I enjoy my job, but it, to me, posting is kind of like going to the gym. Like you get in your rhythm, it feels good. But then once you stop, it's like really hard to get back into it. You know, again, that's like me being unemployed for six months. And I personally wouldn't want that. But could I do it? Yes, but that would be so crazy. Literally, that's like over a decade. I've been on social media pretty much every day. So that would be a huge life change for sure. Okay, you guys, that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and turn on your post notifications so you never miss out. Make sure you guys follow me over on Instagram because I will be doing that Q&A with Mel very soon so you guys can send over your questions on there. And I post pretty much daily on Snapchat. Make sure you guys follow me on there too. And like I mentioned, I wanna grow on TikTok. So make sure you guys follow me on TikTok. Again, all my handles on everything is just my name, Nazanin Kavari. So make sure you guys look me up and follow me on there and i'll see you guys in my next video bye everyone